Got to come on. I will wait for a few people. I'm just going to have to look because I've never done StreamYard, so I'll have to. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, I can see how many people are on in the top left. Right. So what we'll do, we'll wait for it to build up a bit. Okay, lovely. Well, at least we did it, mate. We did it. <laughs> oh, mate, what a nightmare. What yeah, an absolute technology, nightmare. Technology. I'm, I'm rubbish at it. We've got 27 on. Hi, everyone. We're going to wait for a few more people to come on, and then we'll start. Cool. My phone's going mad. There's people messaging me and shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I put it on Facebook so everyone, everyone would know. Yeah, I did too, mate. Yeah. There's a lot, lot of me offshore mates uh, away at sea, so uh, they'd, they'd be tuning in probably to oh, kill an hour. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll wait for a few more people to come on. Yeah, it's up to 30. Give it, we'll leave it a minute or so. Yeah, 59, 60. I think Matt, oh, maybe. Oh, that's no, that's the that's the how many minutes? Can, can everyone see the screen and everyone hear us? I a doing Ben Max a doing. Uh, can someone let me know in the comments if you can hear us? Yeah. Hi, and Henry. Me, so. Hi, brother. It's my brother <laughs> Andrew. Hi oh, there. Don't think I've ever met your brother, have I? No, I don't think you did. No. Um, is De oh, Debbie, Debbie Perry. Oh, lovely. Hello, Dad. Steve, how you doing? Number, number one gaming. So I don't like missing people off. Um, right, we've got eighty-two on. So what we'll do, we'll start. We'll start now, Mark. Yeah. And then what we'll do, yeah, more people will join as we're going along. I'll answer a few. We'll we'll answer a few questions as well. So as we're going along, if anyone wants questions for Mark, so as we know. Mark Peterson, brother of Charlie Salvador, uh, previously Charlie Bronson. And um, we're going to, at the end of this, we're going to go into what's been happening recently regarding the documentary, uh, George Bambi's um, turning up, saying that he's Charlie's son and the stuff surrounding that. And uh, what's happened with Mark, Mark's been manipulated by the media recently, haven't you? When was that? Last week? Wednesday. Wednesday, they've manipulated a, a very brief phone call. Absolutely well, it wasn't, it wasn't even a phone call, Matt, to be honest. It was a text message uh, from, a, uh, Ryan uh, from a Daily Daily Mirror reporter called Ryan Merrifield. And he said, hello, is this Mark Peterson's address? If so, um, would you like to comment on your brother's parole? So I, I messaged him back and I said, no, I have nothing to do with my brother anymore. So I don't wish to comment. I said, ever since... Uh, George Bambi, his fake son's been introduced. I have nothing to do with him, so I don't wish to comment. And he went and had uh, and used that as a, as a story. And all the other papers have ran with it. I've looked today, and there's I saw ten different papers have ran with it. It's obscene, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's terrible. I mean, we'll get to that in a second. So we're going to yeah. go all the way back to your childhood, obviously. So you, there was you and Mick, which is yeah. Charlie, and your brother yeah. John. There's three of That's us. That's right. Yeah. What was the age difference between you all? So, John, uh, um, see, I, I know everyone knows him as Charlie, but to me, he's always been Michael. He's Michael Peterson. He always will be. Um, so, Michael's eight years older than me and John's nine. Um, John sadly passed away back in 2001 uh, at a brain tumour. Uh, so, but we grew up in, uh, in Luton, all born in Luton, born and bred. Moved up to Ellesmere Port in 1969 with Vauxhalls and that. John joined the Royal Marines. I wish Michael had, because if he had joined the Royal Marines, he would have took a different path. Imagine um, if he put all that strength and energy into that. Oh, man, he, he would have been an awesome Royal Marine or a para. Yeah. Um, it's just the problem with, with Michael is, uh, I'll say Charlie, because don't confuse people. The problem with Charlie is he doesn't like being told what to do. So I could imagine him in basic training being ordered around by a gobby corporal or something. He would have ended up chinning him in the glass house with routine. But <laughs> it's, it's, such, it's such a shame he didn't go down that road. I mean, there's a beautiful picture of you three together, which I tried to put on, but I used yeah. the other one. But it's such a cute picture of you three. Is that me with a little bow tie on and my brother's yeah. either side of me? Yeah. yeah, lovely picture that is. Um, I love that picture, yeah. Yeah, beautiful picture. What, what was um, Charlie like as a, as a youngster then, when you were knocking around when you were younger? You know what? He always looked out for me. I always looked up to him and John. Um Especially when John joined the Royal Marines, I remember uh, he was uh, he was a Royal Marine bandsman. He was and his band were marching down the mile towards um, Buckingham Palace, like. And uh, I was only sort of nine, ten. 
and I was marching alongside my brother sort of thing. And I thought one day I'm going to be marching and I did. I followed in his footsteps and joined yeah. the Royal Navy. You did, didn't you? How long were you in yeah. the Navy for? I did 14 years in the Navy. Um, yeah. That's the saddest day in my life. I was a career man and I left after 14. I should have done me 22. But then I carried on working at sea. I, I worked on the oil rigs after that for 17 you, years. So I've worked, I worked at sea. sea most of my life. You've got a love for the sea. Yeah, a big time, yeah. Yeah. O oil rigs, must, that's quite a dangerous occupation as well, isn't it, the oil rigs? Yeah, well, not so much me. I want a roughneck or anything like that. I wasn't working out on deck. I was uh, catering side of it. But, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you still have to do all the training and you're all, all the catering staff for first aiders and stuff. And uh, But, yeah, it was a good life. And, and I met some great lads. And I'm hoping a few of them that are offshore at the moment are tuned in tonight to kill an yeah. hour of boredom. I, <laughs> <laughs> I did see a few of them in the comments. Stuart Godfrey oh, cool. and Debbie's on, by the way. Oh, lovely. I've got a nice message from Lorraine. Um, so, yeah, so going on to sort of Charlie first getting in trouble and, and in, mainly when he went to prison in 1974. Yeah. How old would you have been then? So he, he was actually on remand in 1973. So I would have been 12 coming on 13. And yeah. my mum and dad hid it from me. I didn't even know he was inside. You know, that they were telling me he was working away and stuff like that. He, he used to work with my Uncle Viv, um, my mum's brother, who's a smashing fella. And there wasn't that much of an age difference to them. They used to work together. They used to paint the pylons and stuff. They were earning good money. And um, he blew Viv out years ago because when he changed his name to Charles Bronson, Viv wasn't having any of it. He said, yeah, we lost our dad in 94. And Viv said to him, basically, if, if your dad knew what you, you were doing with your name, it, you know, he'd be turning in his grave. So my brother blew him out. He's never spoke to him since. Yeah. He's like that, Charlie. He cuts people off, doesn't he? He will cut you off if, if Big you time. upset him. Yeah. Big time. Um, we sort of, cut, sort of cut me off over, and it was my fault because it, I was one of his ten. He's got a phone list of he's only allowed ten people. And yeah, he couldn't get hold of me because my landline got cut off, and that's quite a privilege to be on his phone list. Of course, he's yeah. He's trying to get hold of one person, and and there's a space there that could be taken by someone else, and it's fair mm. enough. I don't, I don't blame him for getting angry, and uh, we sort of lost touch after that. But um, I mean. Uh, well, obviously, everyone knows the, the bad side of Charlie, which is what the media always portray. Mm. Yeah. Um, but we were speaking the other day. He's called me up so many times with, with off trying to get me work. He had a lovely, beautiful message for my newborn son. And mm. he, he has got a lovely heart, but he's also oh, got the other side, obviously. Yeah, I to totally agree with you. He, he's done loads of good deeds for people. You know, when we were on track, me and him, I, I, I used to look after all his art and that, and it, he was always ringing me up. Oh, send a bit of art to this address as a sick child and all that. Raise loads of money. He's raised thousands and thousands. Yeah. So you can't fault him on that side. He, you know, he, he has got a heart of gold. He really has. He, yeah, yeah, he has. Um, so, I mean, what, did you visit him when you were a youngster in, in, in the big prisons back then? With, with, I when did. The were in there. Did you see any of the, the craze? Yeah, I went, I went to um, Parkhurst and Nick's like that. Um, in the 70s. In the seventies, yeah, when I was a young young lad, like young teenager, and that's, it, when, that, that's when it was full of all the legends were in there, weren't they? Exactly. Uh, he's, he's got some stories to tell about that, and uh, in fact, um, years later, I joined the navy in nineteen eighty, and I was um, down the Falklands in nineteen eighty two. It was my twenty second birthday, and I actually had a, a birthday card and a signed Polaroid of uh, Ronnie and Reggie Cray and Charlie, their older brother. And it just said, uh, "God bless Mark, love Ron Cray." I've still got the picture. I should have dug it out actually. Yeah. And, and stuff yeah. like that. And, and my Matlow mates were like, uh, well, we're not going to fuck about with you if you know the craze and stuff like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> so you were in the Falklands? Yeah, I, was, I, I got down there after the surrender. Um, so the surrender was 14th of June. I got down there in July. And I was based over Navy Point across the Sound from um, Port Stanley. I was, I was on a 847 Naval Air Squadron, yeah. Yeah. I mean, And we were cleaning up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you've um, obviously been supporting Charlie from day one. You've, I know you've been visiting him since the beginning. Yeah. Well, you know, because I worked at sea in the Navy and then the oil rigs, I couldn't do as much as I'd like to do. I missed loads of demos. You know, you miss so much when you work away at sea. I miss my kids growing up and major events and stuff like that. But, yeah, yeah. I was always there for him. And I was always you – know, that's how we first met at a demo, wasn't it? That's how we met, which was, I think, yeah. 2000. Was it the first one? I think so, yeah. 2008, yeah. I think it was. Something like that, uh, yeah. We, there was three protests. I went to three. Mm. The one at uh, Number 10 Downing Street, uh, and there was one at Trafalgar, and there was another one at um, Westminster or somewhere, wasn't it? Where was that one? Yeah. 
And um, there was a petition handing over, wasn't there? To, uh, Downing Street and that, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a shame now that you, you, when you fell out, you don't you haven't spoken for a few years now. I think is it? Oh, good few years. We first fell out before Bambi come on the scene. Actually, he blew me out because um, I'm not going to mention a name, but the 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 woman that we he was sort of with before Paula came along. She was she was a really good co campaigner. I couldn't couldn't falter on that, but she was controlling, and she managed to 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 get Charlie to blow nearly all his mates out, and he had some really good staunch friends and that. And I fell out out with her over something. We had words, and the next minute she's um, my brother rings her, and, she, and he, he she's telling him that I, I was bullying her, verbally bullying her, bull, bullying her in her. No. Now, if you know me, you, I haven't got a, a, a bad bone in my body to do anything like that. I just basically no. spoke to her how she spoke to people. Yep. So he, he was giving her GBH of the year olds over it. My missus is telling me to calm down. I'm, I'm getting a bit carried away. Um, so she was giving him G, GBH of the year old about it. So my brother rings me, says, look, apologise to her and send her flowers and that'll be the end of it. And I said, brother, I said, I'd rather send flowers to fucking Rose West. I said, I'm sending that woman nothing. Mm. And he said, so he said, well, if you're not going to do it, that's the end of me and you. And it was. And I, I, we haven't really spoke since. I've had the odd sort of letter off him. But she managed yeah. to break the whole family up, really. Um, it was I very remember. sad. I remember. Yeah. yeah, it caused a lot of risk. There's always yeah, and, Andy and Lorraine. And, so, sorry, and Andy and Lorraine, my cousin. Chat, by the way. Oh, hi, Lorraine. <laughs> Andy and Lorraine, um, they've done the most for Charlie over the years. Yeah. And he just threw it all back in their faces. And Can I, can I say, Andy and Lorraine Salvage are, Lorraine is Charlie's cousin, isn't she? They're cousins. Yes, so, yeah. Lorraine's mum is sisters with Ira, your mum. Yeah, uh, my auntie Eileen, she passed away a few years ago, bless yeah, her, yeah. Eileen, yeah. That's you you met her, didn't you? Lovely lady. Well, yeah. Whole family lovely. I've got them with, with everyone. Yeah. Um, so Lorraine and Andy, yeah, uh, done so much for Charlie, and they've also now... Uh, Been blown up. And he, yeah. he slags them off in, in, in one of his books. I didn't get to read it. He slagged me off too, but, you know, he's water off a duck's back. I, I really can... My, I can hold my head I have done nothing wrong, you know what I mean? What what do you think it is that that after all the support over the years that that gives that makes him just turn like that? What what is the? I don't know. He's he's, he's always if if you if you get something in his head, he, he won't he won't change his mind. You know, yeah. he, he, even though everything that's happened, that, that's what really pissed me off about the, the the newspaper article saying you know I didn't support him coming out. Well, I really do. I'd love to, him to come out and give me mum a hug. You know, she's ninety three this year. She. We don't know how much longer she's going to be around. She's not in the best of health. And it'd be lovely for them to spend some quality time together. That's the one of the reasons I wanted to do this with you is to put yeah. get your side across because I came across the newspaper article which basically said you you have you don't support his bid for freedom, which is... That totally bollocks, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So as soon mm. as I saw that, I knew that they'd done a, a little move there. Oh, big like time. Yeah. I have actually got a... A reporter lined up um, with the Daily Mail, and they want to do a story. And I said, "Look, I will do a story, but not until the, the parole result, because I, I don't want that. like the documentary. We'll go into that in a bit, but that that yeah. that didn't do him any favours. That's jeopardised his freedom. And I think if I do a story while the parole things, you know, well, we've, Friday was the last day. They got fifteen days to make their minds up, whatever. Once that's done, then I, I'm I'm going to do a story, and um, yeah." expose what's been going on, you know, because it's awful. Yeah, it is. I mean, I watched the documentary. I couldn't believe a lot of what I, I saw. I know how they edit these things as well, and they, they cut bits out, and then it looks out of context. And um, the bit I, the, I straight away when I saw was George Bambi talking to Ira in that in the front room. I knew yeah. that was years ago, because Ira was just about eight or nine years, wasn't it? And mm, he wasn't yeah. even, he hadn't even came but out. At least seven time. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So it, point, it, go, on, go on, Matt. Sorry. No, no, you can. Yeah. So you know the story. Well, that, that, that footage of Bambi asking her questions, it looks all cosy. And people who don't know think, oh, that's grandson and, and, and grandmother having some quality time together. He was actually there with a reporter. He, he was the the, pap, the the photographer, stroke journo. Yeah. And um, my mum likes a few wobbly coffees, as she calls them, Gaelic coffees and that. And you can tell she's had a few. And she says jokingly, you know, if, if Charlie ever gets out, I'll keep him in, in an effing cage and let him out for his meal. It's that's Jess. You know that, Matt. You know yeah. me, Mum. 
But for yeah. Joe Public watching that, they're thinking, bloody hell, Bronson's mum's even stitching him up there. And it, yeah. And the thing that really, really pissed me off about that documentary, they asked me and my mum to take part in it last May. And we both declined. We said, no, thank you. We don't want to be in it. Now, footage, I've seen both episodes and uh, photographs. They've blanked my face off, which I'm happy about. And then they go and use footage of my mum when she said she didn't want to be in it. So yeah. I rang, the, I rang um, Fremantle, the company that did it. I rang them up and I spoke to the woman who, who, who'd asked us if we wanted to be in it. I said, why have you used footage of my mother? And she said, well, that's footage from a previous documentary. That's never been in a documentary. That's footage that Bambi, that's footage that Bambi took. So that footage has never seen the light of day until that documentary. Unless Bambi's run it on his, you know, one of his YouTube pages or his, he, he blocked me. I'll, I'll go into that later. He blocked me from all that. So I don't know what he gets up to, to be honest. So but, it's, um, it's now I've worked it into that document, the new documentary, it fits yeah. in almost seamlessly. And then it looks like it's been done recently. Yeah. Um, and it, it, the documentary shouldn't have been called Bronson Fit to be Freed or whatever it's called. It should have been called The Bambi Show. I mean, I, That's I, unbelievable. Yeah, that it has. Um, there's a lot of things that he said about Charlie being a danger when he gets out. The main shocking, thing I know, sort of saying about yeah. him with a knife and all that, and um, he he was sort of saying he would be worried, mm. weren't he? I mean, he, he can he can make more money while my brother's inside, I suppose, can't he? Yeah. So can I just briefly go back to the Daily Mail reporter? I told her I'll do a story. She said she's spoke to Bambi's mother. Now, my brother told me that Bambi's mother was dead. They've concocted the whole brother, that son, father-son thing. It's been dreamed up because of Bambi's connections with the press, basically. Now, I'm disgusted. This was about seven years ago. Mum would have been like, like eight, you know, 86, 87. They tried to con me mum into thinking that she had a long-lost grandson. Uh, Bam so Bambi visited me mum first as a journo. Then he's ringing her up with this long-winded story. And so my mum's straight on the phone to me, guess what, I've got a long-lost grandson. I'll give this George your phone number. He's going to ring you and, and explain it to you. So he rang me, very convincing man. But I'm thinking at the time, my brother hadn't long been married to Irene, his first wife, who he adored. She's a lovely girl she was, she still is. And I thought, there's no way he'd be fucking about with another woman. Because they went everywhere together. And, and it's, so I said to George, look, this is a lot to take in, George. I said, and they'd already done this supposedly DNA test from a couple of clippings from my brother's moustache, spit from a sandwich. So I said, well, let, I'll tell you what, George, let's me and you, or me and my mum, do a DNA test with you. And then if it comes back positive, then we'll welcome you into the family with open arms. Mark, I'd be thrilled to do that. Oh, great. So we, I start arranging it. Next minute, he blocks me from social media, his phone, everything. So what does that tell you? So a good friend of my brother's, uh, Rod, Rod Aaron, Harrison, who you know, Rod, don't you, and Linda? Yep. Um, him and a couple of other guys decided to get together and got five grand together, contacted Bambi, said, look, there's five grand here to go to your chosen charity. If you do a DNA test with Mark or Ira, refuse to do it. What does that tell you? So what's so this one that he keeps showing because a couple of people in the comments said that there's been a DNA test, but that's obviously what do you think that is a doctored one or a? It's either doctored or he took DNA from his son if he's got a son or you know one of his relatives. Yeah. So um so but, but, but again sorry I'm going back to the report oh, yeah. as well. Okay, yeah, so good. um she she'd spoke to to Bambi's mother who supposedly is dead. Um, to see whether she would like to do a story. She, she never said whether she would or not, this reporter, but she said she'd also spoke to Bambi if he'd like to, to participate in this story. And you know what the first thing he said to her was? How much are you going to pay me? Yeah. I mean, when <laughs> I watch the documentary, he even admits in the documentary that they make up stories. Yeah. He said, he said we, we make up stories and we get together and we think of a good story. So this, straight away, you're going to lose credibility then to me if you're yeah. into to making up stories so um and the fact that yeah so you, you offered five grand to do a dna refused and then disappeared yeah i mean shocking yeah so if i end up, if i end up doing this story i'll, I'll be calling them out on, on the national newspaper saying come and do this dna test and let's prove it once and for all we, or, or even tell he would be it's, it's a pit it's a pity jeremy carl showing on anymore go on there 
do a DNA test. <laughs> well, so, so you're talking probably a couple of weeks once the parole's over and done with. You'll yeah. Set the wheels in motion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it's a shame how it's all turned out. And um, what do you think is what, what would you think the chances of parole are for Charlie now? Well, after that documentary, that, that, you know, they, they reckon the three people on the panel wouldn't have seen it. I don't know, but. I don't know. I I, I, I I can't see him getting released straight from no. Cat A. You no. know, he'll have to be downgraded and go to the system, but he certainly needs rehabilitation. I mean, 48 years in prison, man, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, yeah. he lives in a fantasy world, and um, so he, he needs rehabilitating. And the plan was of him for always to come to come and stay with me here in Wales, live in a nice little village in Wales, nice and quiet. Obviously, that, that's not going to happen because I've washed my hands of him. But, you know, saying that, Matt, I, I really hope he gets out. You know, he's, he's done yeah. his time. He, even the guy in the documentary, the, the, um, Phil Danielson, who, who took hostage, you know, even he said he's done long enough as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. He should come out, didn't he? Which yeah. is good of him, I yeah. thought. And that's what I wanted you to get across, is that you do want him out and every, all of the whole family want him out. Yeah, of course they do. And that newspaper article, to put that, yeah. um, was disgusting to say mm. his own brother wants, he's not supporting his bid for freedom when you clearly are. And, um, but yeah. you know, you know, we, we the family did take part in the real bonds and the documentary about twelve years ago, and the summit that said in that documentary that still haunts me to this day, and that's uh, when Dave Courtney says, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to see Charlie get out, but I think it'll end in tears, and I, and I, I deep down I think it will. I, I think he'll end up coming out in a box. Really. Sad to say. Mm. So you think that he he won't come out of prison alive? You think he'll, no. he'll be in there? No, or if not if not in a box, it, he'll come out like Reg Gray did when he's only got a short time to live, terminally ill. You think the government, the gov yeah, they're not going to let him out. He's a political no. prisoner like, like they did yeah. with Reg. He's, he's, he he's, he's caused them that much. Ill. Yeah, he's caused them that much embarrassment and over the years with his roof, rooftop protests. And, you know, you know he, he says, says himself he's been naughty and all that, and he has. But he, he's had some right beatings. Um, right. 19, 1981, I was based at, uh, I was in the, I'd been in the Navy about a year. I was based at Portland in Dorset, a naval air station. And I got a phone call, um, my commanding officer did from, from the prison authorities. Can, can I be released to go to Broadmoor to talk him down off the roof? He'd been up there about a week. He'd wrecked the roof. It, uh, uh, so I, I get, gets there and it turns up, rocks up in uniform. My dad's there. So we, we managed to talk him down after about an hour. And uh, the condition, I've, I've, I think I mentioned this in the documentary that I was in, but basically, I'll, I'll run through it again, but basically part of the agreement, we could have a visit with him and he could have some food and that, he was starving. So, so we sat in this room and he gets waltzed in with all these nurses, as they call them, with rod nail boots and that, all bruises, all ex-military by the look of them. So we have a visit with him and he didn't stop eating and he, and he looked uh, black as the ace of spades where he ripped this roof off, he, you know. And so after we, we left, they, they put him in hospital. He had a right paste in. And that's not the only time. He's had lots of yeah. lots of good idings. I know he's dished them out when he's deserved them sometimes. Yeah. But, um, you know, that they've they've given him some right beatings inside. Yeah. He sort of thrived on that at one point, didn't he? The um, yeah. notoriety. Yeah. And, but obviously, as he's got older now, he's, he doesn't want to be getting involved in that. I don't think he's had any violence for, what, is it 10 years or...? He's been pretty much trouble free. He still spits his dummy out occasionally, you know, if he told something he don't like and that. But you know, he's happy doing his art and stuff like that. And, and yeah. he's got better and better over the years, to be honest. His yeah. artwork's great. And my my house here in Wales it used to be like a, a an art gallery. I had all his art framed and all that. But yeah. I've got my. In fact, the, the poster behind me, I've got a motorbike in it now. That was I had the Bronson poster there with signed yeah. by Tom Hardy, yeah. and and your picture was there. I had all the oh, all the yeah. famous boxers. Because remember yeah, after my, the documentary, you rang me, yeah. says, "Oh, cheers, cheers for the men." Yeah, yeah. My picture was on the wall behind you in the in the film. Yeah, yeah. I remember that? Yeah, I was chuffed. I was chuffed. Oh, nice one. You, yeah. you deserve to be there as well, pal. Yeah, thank you. Not, not many people say they thought Anthony Joshua is there. Yeah, thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Respect. Appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so going forward, now I suppose you're going to just wait till the parole's over, that the hearing, and then mm. and then make your move. How, how's Ira doing at the moment, Charlie's mum? I, I, that, that's why, because we were going to go live at eight, weren't we? I said, can we make it nine? So I go down to see my old dear uh, every day, do a dinner and that. And uh, I told yeah. her 
said, oh, I'm having a live chat with Matt later. She said, what, Matt Leg? Oh, he's, he's this, she he is. <laughs> but, she, yeah, she's all right. So she, she can't hardly walk now, bless her. Um, take her out in a wheelchair and actually she, she can yeah. scoot around the flat and a little boggy thing. But she's, she's still got it up there. Yeah. Sorry? She's 93 now, isn't she? She's 93 now, and she does get a bit confused. She's on oh. strong painkillers. Yeah, she's yeah. 92 now, November. Um, but all, occasionally, your family, all, all your family have got a great sense of humour. Everyone from Ira, the whole family, yeah. every single one. Yeah. Charlie as well. Oh. Charlie's really funny. and Yeah, some right characters. I don't know. Yeah. Did you ever meet John, me, me late brother John? No, I didn't meet John. No. He, he, he come home and he went at this brain tumour. He didn't have long to live. And he come home uh, in late 19, uh, late 2000. Uh, to basically to say his goodbyes to everyone, and they went back, and he, he passed away in third of March. It's his anniversary just gone. Oh, well, John, John, John was a character. Everyone loved John. Yeah, I heard he was very and, respected, and, very good man as well, John. Yeah, yeah, and 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 Charlie looked up to him being his bigger brother and stuff. And, and like yeah. I said earlier, I just wish that me that Charlie Michael would, would have gone down the same road as me and John did. Me, me yeah. dad was ex navy. He was in the tail end, the tail end of World War Two. He he boxed for the navy as well. Yeah, I remember. So yeah. I've seen, I'm sure I've seen, I might have seen a picture or something, but mm. so, so you were eight years younger than, than Charlie. Yeah, yeah. So you were the younger, yeah. And like you said, I, if, you but, put, if you put that energy and that strength and that focus that he's got and dedication into something positive, he, he yeah. would have succeeded. He would have definitely succeeded. But he decided oh, yeah. to put it into becoming what he's become now. He, he would have been SAS material for his yeah. um, for his. For his fitness and stuff like that, but just he wouldn't have had it up here. He, he doesn't like being told what to do. He's got the strength of mind in certain ways of being able to take the, the sort of the punishment and the training, but he hasn't got the he wouldn't be told mm. what to do, will he? No, he's got that, that strength of character. Aye, anyone that's done that long in prison and still got a sense of humor, still sharp, sharp minded, and he's still, yeah, on the yeah, yeah. He used to call me out when he used to call me out on the phone, he would be. He knew everything you're going to say. He was, it was all his little points made out, and he asked me to look out the window and tell him what's going on outside. And That's it. Always, what are you, you, you having for dinner? Yeah, what are you having for dinner? Always, always got to have a pint of beer with it as well. If it was a curry, you have got to have a pint of beer with that. Mm, yeah, it's just a shame. Yeah, it's a real shame that um, the, the, all the family have sort of fell out of him and what's going he on now. But you know what? Um... Do you think? Do you think yeah. you'd ever reconcile? Is there any way that, that you can see a reconciliation in the future? Not me and him, no. Because the last letter I had off him is when I he was saying I was interfering about Bambi. Yeah. Um. Uh, saying you know, keep your nose out of it, sort of thing, and uh, it's nothing to do with you, me and George, and all that. And I said, well, it is to do with me because you're trying to con our mum into thinking she's got a long lost grandson. If he. If he just rang me and my mum and, and said, like, um, look, we're making up this story about George being my son because of his connections, but take no notice, he's not, he's not nothing, not, we're not flesh and blood, I would have accepted that. Yeah. If he wanted to pull the authorities and Joe public, then, then fine, but not family. So, so it became my business. So um, he rang me up and says, you know, keep out of it. Um, and, you know, I want nothing more to do with you. And I said, okay, fair enough. But I carried on, and I had a letter off him, and it said, um, basically, you're no brother of mine anymore. Um, do us all a favour and get cancer and die. Yeah. So, wow. so I can so I can piss on your grave. And I thought, well, there's no going back from that. If if he if he wrote to me or, or tried to ring me up and said, you know, I was out of order and all that, I I, I can't forgive him for that. Yeah, I wouldn't say that to my worst enemy. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I didn't know about the books. I didn't realise there was negative stuff written in in books. Apparently so. Yeah, yeah. I'm one of his later that. books. Well, I'm... you know what, Lorraine, my my cousin Lorraine Salvage, she she typed out his first book by hand. You know, his first book. She she's done so much for that guy, and then she shits on him. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, he shits on her. I'm getting a bit yeah. emotional in mate. It's. Uh, oh. Well, mate, I really appreciate you coming on. I wanted you to get this across, especially the newspaper stuff that's happened, which is totally untrue. Yeah. And you would never, ever, um, you are supporting Charlie to get out. So um, I want you to get that across and have you, have your, I'd love, have I'd your... love, I'd, Matt, I'd love nothing more than him to get out and spend some quality time with me old yeah. days. You'd love it. 
yeah. yeah. She she's had forty eight years of heartache. Yeah, and it's about time. Yeah, I mean, if he did get out, I've said this before. He's no danger to to women, children, the average everyday man. No, uh, but I think it would be a case of someone. It'd have to be something starts on him, or someone. He maybe got that paranoia and we, to adjust after forty eight years to to all those crowds and the technology. Uh, it's a totally different world out there. To it adjust. is, mate. It, it is. Take, it was. He'd have to be reintegrated gradually. Yeah. Yeah. Down the, down the chain, mm. um, and then and then tolerating other prisoners in maybe open prison and having to tolerate it, and because he's so well known, it would be the harassment he would get as well. Yeah. But yeah, he deserves and it, it. you know, he'll, he'll just want a quiet life and, and get on with his art. He, he, he could make a nice living from his art, and he'd probably give most of the money away because he is, a gen as you know, he's a generous guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is generous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's um, it's, it's it's such a such a, a shame, a, a waste of a talented life. You know what I mean? Yeah, it really is. Yeah, and and, and what's happened lately? But um, really grateful for you coming on, Mark. I'll let you go. Hey, Matt, it's been a pleasure and it's been lovely to see you. But it's been too yeah. long. Lovely so uh, this this summer I'm planning on coming down south to see my cousins and that. We'll have we'll have a big shindig. Yeah, we'll get together, mate. Good to yeah, see it'll you. Be lovely again. to see you. Nice one. Thanks everyone in the chat. Really appreciate everyone watching. 450 on at the minute, which is brilliant. Oh, lovely. And, uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Mark. I'll catch up with you soon. Lots of love to all the family. Love you, mate. Love you too. Bye, mate. Bye, thank mate. You, Bye.